I came uh, as a student of the embryology course in 1955 in the summer. As I recall, it was a fairly long period of time we spent here, either four or six weeks. And uh, following the course, I stayed on uh, working in Clifford Gropestein's laboratory, doing research on neurosecretory hormones. And the uh, animal subject I worked with uh, was a lobster. Uh, because the uh, hormones were located in the eye stalk and therefore easy to, easy to recover. And uh, I can remember one thing in that uh, each week uh, I'd get a shipment of uh, oh, half a dozen or more lobsters uh, from which all I did was trip the eye stalk. The lobsters lived on happily in the uh, uh, water in which we had for them. Uh, and at the end of this week, I had lots of friends because they all wanted to come while we had to get rid of the lobsters, which meant cooking them uh, on a beach uh, somewhere nearby. So uh, that's probably my <laughs> most vivid memory of uh, uh, the summer. For me, as a part-time student in biology and part-time student in the history of science, uh, I was getting a good deal more attention than might otherwise have been the case uh, in that uh, uh, back at Harvard, yes, I did have good relationships with the people in the labs that I worked with and had a space in the lab. Uh, and uh, we uh, had lots of interactions. But uh, the kind of intense uh, um, feedback you got uh, down here at Woods Hole made a, made a big difference uh, to me. The uh, sessions were good in that uh, you were expected to work hard. You came in early in the day. Uh, you were working with a group of, what were there, perhaps 20 of us in the course at the time. Uh, and in the succeeding weeks, different people uh, uh, took uh, the lead uh, in uh, uh, presenting materials uh, to the students and in responding to questions and uh, also in uh, hanging around and watching them work in the lab because part of every day uh, we were in the lab uh, not just uh, listening but uh, also dealing with things hands-on. Of course in embryology down here at Woods Hole that was grand because the specimens were almost all uh, marine specimens and uh, it uh, meant that we had fresh materials all the time and uh, could be pushed fairly hard uh, to uh, get work done. The people in the lab, students, uh, the lab assistants, the faculty, all expected to spend a lot of time at it. Uh, and although we might take a little time off at the height of the sun in the day to go for a swim, we'd be back and often working into the evening. Uh, so uh, there was a nice spree in that sense. And in one way or another, we found that we were learning as much from our fellow students as we were from the instructors, in that uh, we were always peering over each other's shoulders, looking, each other's, looking through each other's microscopes uh, to see what was going on and then explain to each other what we believed was happening, what we believed uh, it meant. And then we'd get one of the uh, uh, knowledgeable people, one of the experts, one of the lab assistants, or one of the uh, uh, faculty to come and tell us whether our guess of what we were uh, looking at really uh, meant, uh, made sense. Uh, I'd worked in uh, labs before as an undergraduate and then as a graduate student at Harvard where I'd come in 1953. So I'd spent time around labs, but uh, probably nothing ever as intense as the time uh, spent uh, in the labs here in Woods Hole. And uh, that kind of uh, memory is, is put in place in your mind. Clifford Gropstein, who uh, I got uh, to know quite well because he gave me a space in his lab at the end of the course. Uh, the outstanding figure among the instructors was uh, John Trinkhouse. 
Trink, uh, as uh, he was known to everyone. Uh, a very lively, outgoing uh, person, as I recall it. He was at Yale at the time. Uh, and uh, just very much uh, someone who imparted a combination of both uh, real important information and skill, but also uh, just very good spirit. Uh, someone who knew how to help you laugh at things when you made a mistake, which was not uncommon. As you can imagine, a group of us trying, uh, working on uh, new organisms, ones we hadn't worked on before. Uh, and trying to do the kind of dissecting or the kind of uh, uh, ob observing of the uh, uh, what was happening in the uh, uh, fertilized egg cell, etc. You could uh, get a lot wrong or in trying to stain things or fix things. Uh, you could make mistakes, uh, which we did. But uh, certainly I came away and I remember the several other graduate students uh, from Harvard who were with us at the time, uh, Dottie Skinner, who went on to an illustrious career in biology, uh, was, uh, you know, again, someone who was always pushing the margins, pushing to see where you could get, uh, but uh, also uh, had a, uh, a very good sense of, oh, humor and uh, uh, not too serious about, you know, who uh, she was. And there were a number of others in the uh, course at the time. Uh, Tim Goldsmith, as I recall, probably the most serious student in the course and in some ways probably the most talented, who uh, uh, led us uh, in many ways into uh, interesting uh, additional things that you might try with the specimens you were working on uh, that week. Uh, Roger Milkman uh, from Harvard, a somewhat more advanced graduate student, was also one of the course assistants. Uh, Roger was uh, punctilious. And uh, which was excellent in terms of those of us who needed to uh, know how to make things work, how to dissect, how to uh, uh, use the microscopes correctly. Uh, but it also brought, uh, how would you say, uh, a lot of humor to him, which he didn't always appreciate. Uh, but uh, he was uh, in that way uh, very much a, uh, a needed personality uh, in the group. As I recall, the other course assistant was also a somewhat more advanced graduate student at Harvard who we knew, a woman named Joan Erickson. And uh, my recollection is that uh, she uh, was a very steadying hand, uh, someone who uh, knew how to uh, help you get things right, uh, which again in a lab uh, when a lot of the material is new to you uh, can make a big difference. I'd say that uh, among those of us uh, in the course, not too many had worked with uh, uh, invertebrate materials. Uh, and uh, so that we were both learning new organisms as well as learning uh, uh, fundamental things about embryological processes. The uh, genius of the labs was that there were new materials always available. Uh, there was just lots of stuff that you could uh, work on. And if you'd made a mistake with uh, uh, one uh, organism, you could go back and get another, a new one, a replacement, uh, without it being uh, uh, as difficult as it might be where you were away in a lab in a city. Uh, almost all the things we worked on were locally collected. In fact, on a number of occasions, we went out with the collectors and brought back materials, which we would then work on uh, in the labs itself. Uh, well, uh, not surprisingly, uh, early on we were introduced to the Captain Kid, uh, where the group would retire after dinner for, if we weren't back in the labs or after we'd been in the labs a while, for a beer or two and the, the kind of friendly interaction. What was fun at the time is I recall that several of the semi-retired or older uh, biologists or people uh, working in the labs would come down and sit with a group of uh, young people, a group of students. And uh, uh, to my mind, uh, it was very beneficial because here you were 
hearing from the mouths of people who you'd read about. And uh, here they were uh, responding to your questions, uh, sometimes dead seriously, other times uh, teasing you with a bit of humor about you know, what their student days were like as compared to yours. Uh, we had a lot of friends, not surprisingly, in the physiology course, which was going on at the same time. And uh, one of the figures in the course, a Harvard professor, George Wall, the biochemist, in whose lab I'd worked back at Harvard, uh, loved to drive off of the group to a beach somewhere, uh, uh, to uh, Truro or to uh, uh, Wellfleet or uh, to Orleans and walk the sand dunes. And what was fun is you take a look some lunch and things, but George always had tales, uh, always had stories, uh, always had interesting questions for you. He was both a very good scientist, but is also in his way a very political figure. He had ideas about what was happening in the world in 1955 as you recall, was really the height of the Cold War. Uh, and uh, I can remember intense discussions uh, with George uh, Wald and others uh, about the politics that was going on at the time, the gaps which were being created between East and West, uh, and the concerns that he and others uh, had about uh, the implications of science. This was a period, you recall, when there was a big controversies over Lysenko and the Lysenko's views on uh, uh, genetics and how these seemed to run absolutely counter to everything uh, we'd, be lear we'd been learning about Mendelian genetics. And uh, uh, this kind of topic would come up alongside what might be just the fun of looking for sea urchins on the uh, beaches or collecting kelp in which you might find some uh, small organisms. In the years following uh, being a student, I dropped away f from Woods Hole for quite a while. But then as I became an active historian of biology uh, at Harvard, close at hand, on a number of occasions during the summer, I was invited down to a conference or to a lecture series uh, and uh, uh, continued a contact uh, in that way. Some of the same people were here and then some new people. Uh, but uh, I'd say that over the years, I must have returned half a dozen times uh, to uh, a Woods Hole for meetings or to give a lecture. Uh, and uh, when uh, we were interested in finding a uh, summer weekend place closer to Boston than the one we'd had up in Vermont, uh, we thought, why not take a look at Woods Hole? And indeed, we came back down. Uh, I knew at the time that uh, Jane Meinshein uh, and others had uh, a project or two going on here. Uh, they had a summer course. Uh, no, and I guess it was take, took place in late spring, early summer, uh, in the uh, one field or another history of the history of biology. And I think at one occasion, I came as uh, a lecturer. Uh, for her in one of those, but uh, uh, she was here. I knew that a former student of mine, Gar Allen, lived uh, uh, here, and uh, uh, I'd seen him on and off through the years, and he'd often urged me to come back down and do things at Woods Hole. Uh, another of uh, former students, uh, Harold Burston, uh, was also in town, not as close in that he wasn't as uh, focused in biology as I'd been, but Sermon I'd known since his student days and had kept in touch with. Uh, there were probably half a dozen other people I had less direct or, or close contact with uh, that uh, well, I'd come and see or visit with uh, uh, George Wald and his wife Ruth when uh, they were down here and he was still alive. Uh, someone who I'd known and had always been a very uh, a generous uh, uh, teacher uh, uh, for me. And uh, as we were later, uh, we're both colleagues at Harvard, we worked together on a number of aspects about university uh, politics, uh, which uh, kept me involved with him. But uh, the return to Woods Hole seemed in many ways the perfect thing to do.